yeah, the bear the bear will probably lead as markets lead economic mm -hmm. cycles. So just like uh, the market's going up right now, we're not sure exactly uh, why. You're going to see some of that in coming months, I think. Um, and just like the bear market last year um, happened, and then you started seeing some of the bad news unfold over the months ensuing. So, so markets lead the economy and lead the activity. So, um, the bear the bear market will could start this year. The bust itself probably could start late this year, you know, but not not before late this year and may may be delayed into next year. The thing is, when you're talking about the economy, you really you can't date recessions while you're in them. You can't and you're not gonna be able to exactly date a bust when you're in it. You'll you'll know when you're in it because at some point because you're gonna see bank failures, etc. But when did it actually start? You know, it's, it's people keep asking me those things and I go, it's not like a, a bell goes off and you go, okay, this was the start of the bust. You know, the NBER um, dates recessions and they go, you know, usually it's after the fact. Um, and when they date it, it's usually started before you thought it started or before the conventional wisdom thought it was. So, so we won't really know all of that until after the fact, probably, but Absolutely. in general, in general, terms i think the bust is going to be most of next year and the bear could start late this year or you know fourth quarter of this year um and um in terms of i uh, just i don't think i answered your question very well in terms of what causes the bust i i use a simple equation of massive leverage mm -hmm. and this is leverage leverage like we've never had before it's it's far beyond what it was even in in 2008-9, you know, we've ramped it up this cycle far beyond and again, worldwide leverage. So we've got 300 trillion in debt. Um, and in uh, in 2000, coming into the pandemic, I think we had 250 trillion in debt. So just in three short years, we're up 50 trillion. I mean, again, we throw these numbers around, but that's a massive change in the amount of debt in the world. So 300 trillion in debt, quadrillions in notional value of derivatives um, and whatever, you know, whatever the implication of that is, because, you know, again, notional value means the derivative is on the underlying security and the value of the security is this, the derivative isn't that value. But, but we've gone from virtually no derivatives in the mid eighties to quadrillions. I mean, and I call derivatives um, leverage on the markets. Mm -hmm. debt, is, debt is leverage on the system, on the economy, on the system. Uh, derivatives are another form of leverage on the market. Mm -hmm. And leverage, uh, I learned in business school, leverage enhances things on the way up. So you can, you, know, you can buy a house with leverage by borrowing money from the bank. You didn't have to wait until you could pay cash for that house. You were able to use leverage. Um, and while the market's going up, while while the housing market's going up, you're saying, "Boy, I I only had to put hundred thousand down, mm -hmm. and my house has gone from, you know, say four hundred thousand dollars to a million, and I didn't have to spend any, I didn't have to put any more into it. Um, so it works on the way up. When you get into a a bad housing market, and the houses all of a sudden fall thirty percent, you're sitting there going, well, oh, you know." I, I'm seeing my house, you know, my my equity go down a lot. So leverage works on uh, to enhance on the way up, mm -hmm. but on the way down, leverage and the the real problem is if you get over leveraged, the leverage massive leverage plus a pandemic that caused economic fragility and confusion. So we've got I think a lot of the problem today is we had all that money put in in 2000 to 20. 2020 and 2021, um, you know, we had five trillion pumped in here in the U.S. We had all those um, multi-trillion-dollar uh, fiscal packages put in. Uh, money was checks were cut for everybody and handed to everybody free money. All those things are confusing statistics today. So you've got problems underlying this system. But you look and say, gee, the GDP is 2%. You know, we're still growing. I thought we were going to be in a recession by now. 
Well, we would have been, except you have all that money still sloshing around that's kind of allowed consumers to stay afloat and, um, you know, allowed people to take on more risk, et cetera. So, so underneath that is fragility. You've got a, a more fragile system because of what happened in the pandemic. Um, you know, it, it hit us harder than we know. You know, underneath it, certainly, you know, a lot of small businesses can tell you how hard they were hit in the pandemic, right? Mm-hmm. Many didn't make it. Others are hanging on by a thread. Um, you know, employment patterns changed. So there's a lot of things that, that that pandemic caused that are still not, I mean, they didn't take us down because we did pump money and everything, but they they are making our system more fragile so that when we do go down, it's, you know, it's going to be a bigger down because of that. So that's massive leverage plus fragility in the system caused by the pandemic, plus uh, a historic policy error. And again, talking about the U.S., it's the Fed, but talking about globally, it's a central bank policy error. They're all doing the same thing. They're all staying on the tight side too long. And so it'd be one thing to make that error if you didn't have massive leverage. But if you've got leverage beyond anything you've ever had before, and then you make a policy error that's bigger than any, uh, you know, uh, that's a big one, it gets magnified. Mm-hmm. And that magnification is a global bust. Absolutely. It's a recipe for disaster. And we're all interconnected, multiplayers, and they're all basically doing the same thing. 